Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. And today we're gonna look at something that I think is completely awesome. And that is how the Dell EMC PowerEdge R7525 takes the AMD Epic Rome or 7002, Epic 7002 series processors and delivers up to 160 PCIe Gen 4 lanes for you to put devices on. And one of the coolest things is that Dell doesn't just limit you to that configuration, they actually make it configurable so you could potentially only use 128 lanes as well. And so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick look at how this whole thing works from the backend technology from AMD, but then we're gonna show you what Dell is doing and this is just absolutely one of the coolest things that you're gonna see. This also has implications when we look forward to future generations of servers and how servers and their designs are changing. So I think you're gonna learn a lot, especially if you don't do this stuff every day. Okay, so let's take a quick second and move back in time. Let's go to the original AMD Epic 7001 Naples release. Now, if you'll recall how the AMD Epic 7001 Naples series was constructed was that you basically had a package and on that package, you had four different dies and each of those dies had both x86 cores, had caches, but they also had all of the IO that you'd potentially need. Each die effectively had 32 high-speed IO lanes. These 32 high-speed IO lanes could be used for a number of different purposes. And examples of that is actually, they could be used as SATA, but we're really not gonna talk about that today. They could be used as PCIe lanes, which we are gonna talk about today, or they could be used as part of the infinity fabric that AMD uses to tie different pieces of silicon together. And we're definitely gonna talk about that one today. Now there is other stuff going on on these dies that we're really not gonna get into because we're really just kind of looking at what happens in a two socket configuration when you need to go from you know, one socket to another socket and do that inter-socket communication. And specifically, when we look at how Naples was designed, you had four different dies and each of those dies, if you had it in a single socket, all of those lanes go and be PCIe lanes. And then that would give you the 128 lanes of PCIe. So effectively you have four dies, each of them has two sets of, of 16 by 16 links, and they could be used as either PCIe or they could be used as socket to socket links. Now in dual socket configuration, when we have to do that socket to socket communication, we take 64 of these lanes and we use those as our PCIe connectivity. And then we use 64 of the lanes and we do that to go from socket to socket. But because we have four different dies, what we actually have is a situation where you get a by 16 link from one die on one socket to its corresponding die on the other socket. Now, when people talk about Naples and they talk about a lot of latency stuff and what happens there, you have to kind of look at this as that's kind of a longer hop. It's off a package onto another, you know, socket. And so that's really what people are talking about because you're now only going, you're not just going from socket to socket, but you're only going to one of the four dies on that socket. And so you actually can have more latency as you have to route from, you know, potentially memory attached to one die and then you have to go to another die and then across to the other socket. And, you know, that can be a pretty, pretty rough transaction. And that's why people, especially in the Naples generation, thought like, oh, that's actually kind of a cool product, but there are some latency issues with it. And AMD totally knew that. So in the Rome generation, they did something that's a little bit different. Now, basically at a very, very high level, it's actually kind of a similar feature set, except for the fact that the die configuration changes. Instead of having those four individual dies, what we now have is a large IO die, and then we have eight compute or up to eight compute dies. Now the compute dies, they have your x86 cores, they have your level three cache, and with Zen 3 that we're gonna see soon with Milan, you're gonna start seeing a more unified design on each of these little compute dies. So you have your cache unified, which is gonna be a big deal for the server space, but we're gonna get to that when it's time. We're not talking about the AMD Epic 7003 series today, but AMD Epic 7003 series is supposed to be socket compatible with the Epic 7002 series. What we really wanna focus on is that IO die because that is by far the most important part of this entire discussion. On that IO die, we basically get our eight sets of by 16 lanes, just like we got with Naples. You have to remember that Naples, you could put actually put a Naples or a Rome CPU in a Naples socket. And so you actually have to have some of this stuff be standardized to even make all that kind of stuff work. And because that IO die is now handling all of the socket to socket, but also the PCIe connectivity, we actually get better latencies. And that is one of the key reasons that Rome is relatively such a hit compared to what Naples was, aside from, you know, AMD actually being in the market a little longer, but you get a whole bunch more capabilities because you have all of that IO centralized on that single die. 
Now, again, if we have a single socket, we can do the exact same thing that we did with Naples. And we say, okay, all of these eight pairs of by 16 lanes, they become PCIe lanes. And that is how we get 128 lanes. When we look at the dual socket configuration, we can get something that's actually a little bit more interesting because now we have four sets of lanes from each socket that go and connect. So we have 64 lanes of connectivity, but then we also have 64 lanes on each CPU that can go to PCIe devices. That's how we get a 128 lane, very basic AMD Epic Roam configuration. Now, of course, we did talk about this back when we first talked about the 160 lane configuration in I think like April of 2019, way before Rome was launched, where there actually is one more extra PCIe lane, which is called, I think the waffle lane. And that waffle lane is what you can put like a BMC on or something like that. It gives you, it gives you an extra lane so you don't have to use it on a lower end peripheral like a BMC. So again, we're just gonna focus on the main lanes here. And what happens is that there is the capability to not necessarily use all of those high-speed IO lanes, so the 64 lanes for that socket-to-socket -socket communication. If you think about what happened in the Naples generation, AMD had to have a interconnect that was relatively the same amount of bandwidth or in the same order of magnitude level of bandwidth that Intel had with their UPI solution. And what happened with Rome is that all of the PCIe lanes basically doubled in speed. We went from PCIe Gen 3 to Gen 4. So all of the 30s and all the stuff that goes behind those lanes to drive those lanes had to actually double in speed. Now, we always talk about the PCIe version of that, but one of the other things that happened was that we actually got double the amount of bandwidth between sockets if we have that full 64 lane link. Now, when you look at what Intel does with their UPI link, they don't really double the amount of bandwidth in most cases. I mean, usually they go up by maybe 10, 15% in a generation. And in fact, they actually just kind of went back and regressed about 33%. So with the big Intel Xeon scalable refresh or second gen Intel Xeon scalable refresh that happened earlier this year, we actually went from Intel Xeon scalable second gen processors from having three UPI links with like a Xeon Platinum or something like that. And now the refresh parts, such as the Intel Xeon Gold 6258R, now only has two UPI links. So we went from three to two, which basically just cuts your bandwidth by one third. So AMD is sitting here looking at this and they're saying, wait a sec, we have so much more bandwidth and we literally have twice as much bandwidth. And that bandwidth is not even just twice because now we're going just IO die to IO die. We don't have to do all these kind of funky hops on all these different compute dies. And so they have a much more streamlined process. And because we have that one piece of silicon, that IO die that we go into, we're not going into each of the individual four pieces of silicon on the compute die. We have some flexibility in terms of what we can use as a link. And so what AMD did, relatively early on is that they said, okay, well, we're going to go and support less than the four links. So less than that 64 lane link between the two sockets. And instead, we're going to let people take 16 of those lanes, turn those into PCIe lanes, and then just have three sets of by 16s or 48 lanes that go between the sockets. And when we're only using 48 lanes, just remember because those 48 lanes are twice as fast as the Naples generation, we actually still get 50% more bandwidth between the two sockets, even though we're using less lanes to connect them. That's some of the beauty of having these very flexible lanes and something really cool that AMD is doing. Intel, on the other hand, because they're using more hard IP blocks for their PCIe and UPI links, they can't really have this flexibility. By adding those extra by 16 or by 16 links on both sides, turning them into PCIe, we go from 128 and we add two by 16 or 32, and we get a total of 160 PCIe Gen 4 lanes available for devices. And so what we're gonna look at next is how the Dell EMC PowerEdge R7525 actually takes that design feature and that design language and turns it into a really cool product and way that they implement it. Now at this point, you're probably sitting here and wondering, hey, Patrick, why do you look so phenomenal today in that t-shirt? And that's because this is a official STH t-shirt from our Teespring shop. And so if you want to go check it out, go look in the description or just below this video and you can go order your own. We also have hoodies and sweatshirts. We have masks and mugs and socks. And so if you want to support STH, that's the way you can do it. Just go buy something from our store and then you can look really cool, probably cooler than I do. Okay, so the theory of having 160 PCIe Gen 4 lanes is all well and good, but what about the implementation of that? So let's get to the Dell EMC PowerEdge R7525 and how it actually implements 160 PCIe lanes. 
And Dell marketing is actually kind of interesting because they still sell a ton of Intel stuff. So they don't really market this like, very hard. I mean, if you go onto the Dell website, it's actually kind of hard to even figure out that they even do this thing. Like I had to go and look at the actual product page for the R7525. I had to go look into the tech specs and the product service manuals, even figure out this is what they were doing. And the only reason that I went on that journey was because as we were doing our review of the system, I started counting lanes. And so let's go through the system and just kind of see what I was seeing. So the first thing that you're going to see is that there are two sets of risers and these sets of risers are configured as having two by 16 lanes and then two by eight lanes. Again, these are PCI Gen 4. Okay, so that's 48 PCI Gen 3 lanes and 48 is actually kind of interesting because with 48 lanes, we now have the same amount as a Intel Xeon scalable first and second generation processor and in fact, the third generation Cooper Lake as well. And because we have PCI Gen 4, even though we only have 48 lanes, we actually have as much bandwidth as Intel has on their entire dual socket configuration in just these 48 lanes. So before we get to any other peripherals, that is literally the PCIe bandwidth of a dual socket Xeon server just on these risers in those four slots. Now, as we open up the system even further, what we saw was a awesome OCP NIC 3.0 slot. And that OCP NIC 3.0 slot, I think is super cool because that is probably one of the biggest contributions to the open compute project out there. The OCP NIC 3.0 is being adopted by basically every major vendor. The cloud providers all said, yep, that's what we're using for the NIC. And basically the industry has standardized on this NIC. And what that means is that we're not gonna have all these custom mezzanine designs for each vendor. Instead, we're just gonna have these OCP 3.0 NICs and the OCP 3.0 NIC is designed to be able to take PCI Gen 4, and it's also designed to have a by 16 lane. And what that means is that you can actually have something like a dual port 100 gigabit per second NIC in an OCP NIC 3.0 slot and actually run both ports at 100 gigabits per second. We also showed in our recent what is a DPU video, we showed what you can actually accomplish by that. And we actually showed a, a Mellanox or a now NVIDIA Bluefield 2 NIC that goes into that OCP NIC 3.0 slot. And if you're a VMware shop or something like that, and you look at Project Monterey, what you can actually do is you could run VMware on that OCP NIC, that Bluefield NIC, and then you can use that to disaggregate your control plane and your application plane by actually running ESXi on that NIC and then being able to provision the metal server however you want. That is a super cool technology, and we're gonna get more into DPUs on STH very soon. But that is another 16 lanes. So now we've gone from 48, now we have 64 lanes, which is enough to fill one AMD Epic Roam CPU, you would think, in a dual socket configuration. So we're only at 64 lanes, no big deal, right? Well, let's go take a look at the front panel. And on the front of the server, what we actually have is 24 NVMe drives. Now each NVMe drive gets a by four link back to the CPUs. And if you take 24 by four, you get 96 lanes of PCIe. Now, sometimes what companies do is they actually implement this configuration by adding things like PCIe switches, but we searched the motherboard and there are no PCIe switches for these drives there. These are all directly cabled into the CPU lanes. So they are getting their full 24 by four lanes from CPU sources. So if we take our 64 lanes from our OCP NICs and our riser slots, and we add that to the 96 lanes that are driving these front panel NVMe SSDs, we get a total of 160 PCIe Gen 4 lanes. Now, how Dell is doing this is actually a bit of absolutely clever engineering and flexibility that goes way beyond what you would normally expect or the kind of, I guess, first order way that you would put something like this together. Of course, we had to figure out what was going on. So we tore the system apart. We took out the entire fan partition and we saw these four cables. Now these four cables in many ways look very similar to the other cables, but these four cables actually carry eight, paint, eight lanes of PCIe Gen 4 and those eight lanes go to two different drives per. And so you'll see on the back plane that there's a total of 12 of these connections of these by eight connections into the back plane, which goes to 24 drives. These middle cables were a little bit different because while most of the PCIe IO comes out behind the CPUs and the memory onto the base part of the motherboard, and you have it usually pretty far from the CPUs, these lanes are actually coming out of cabled spots that are very close to the CPU sockets. And there are a total of four of these that go from that front edge of the motherboard to the front panel NVMe SSDs. And so we know that 32 lanes are being basically routed from the CPUs to the front panel. 
XGMI connectors. And the reason for that is because that's kind of the name of the interconnect between the different CPUs. And so what you have is you have these four connectors. And we realized going through the service manuals is that there's actually a couple different configurations of these. Now, our particular configuration is actually routing these lanes from the CPU and using those to go to the front panel NVMe drives. But there are other configurations. I mean, in theory, you could go and use these lanes and drive GPUs. You can do a whole bunch of different things with them, but they're all really close to the CPU. And we looked and there's actually an XGMI cable. So you have another option with this unit. You can actually cable the CPUs together and do that cross CPU to CPU link using an XGMI cable that spans these two sets of by 16 links from each CPU. So if you remember from our diagrams earlier, we had those by 16 lanes that could be either teal if they went from socket to socket, or they could be red if they were being used as PCIe lanes. And that is exactly what we have happening here. These lanes are actually able to be used for either going socket to socket, or they're able to be used for PCIe. And what Dell's able to do with this design is they, they have the flexibility to either have that full bandwidth link between the two CPUs, or they have they can route those PCIe lanes either, either to the front panel or to peripheral cards, whatever they wanna go do, they can do that using this design because it's so flexible and elegant. Now, as you can probably tell by now, this was actually part of our Dell PowerEdge R7525 review that we're actually pulling out so we can do a separate piece on it and just take a look at this technology because it's really cool, really elegant, and really flexible, actually. This is something that Intel can offer because there's no way that Intel is going to offer 160 lanes on the current, you know, second generation Intel Xeon scalable or third generation Cooper Lake Xeon scalable. And so 160 lanes in a dual socket platform is crazy. And you're also getting these not just as PCIe Gen 3 lanes, these are actually PCIe Gen 4 lanes. Just the raw connectivity of being able to have 160 PCIe lanes without having to use a PCIe switch is actually kind of groundbreaking. And if we look ahead to the Ice Lake generation, this is actually more important because if you wait until the end of Q1, early Q2 to actually go get your, uh, sorry, of 2021 to go get your Intel Xeon Ice Lake generation system. Well, what you're going to find is that you only get 64 PCIe lanes by or 64 PCIe Gen 4 lanes per socket in Ice Lake. And so you get 128 like you get with the base configuration with ROM. What you don't get is you don't get the option to have the 160 lanes like AMD has here. That's because AMD is using more modern switchable high-speed I.O. rather than using static blocks for interconnect and PCIe. The other big thing that we wanted to point out here is just the fact that this really shows some of the future of servers, because not only are these lanes flexible, but we also have a lot more cabling involved. If you look at the actual motherboard itself, the only kind of traditional-ish PCIe slot that you have is really the OCP NIC slot. All the rest of the slots are on you know, fancy high-density riser connections, or they're basically cabled from the motherboard and going to some riser location, or they're going to the front panel, wherever they're going. And so something that we're going to see, especially as PCIe Gen 4 and Gen 5 take hold, and we get tighter signaling requirements, PCB runs that we've had in generations of servers previously just aren't going to really work. And we're going to see more and more cables running PCIe through servers. And so this Dell EMC PowerEdge R7525 really shows that trend and it shows it today. So kudos to the Dell team for coming up with such a flexible and elegant solution. This is absolutely awesome. We're going to talk about it a little bit less now in our PowerEdge R7525 review. But from a nerd perspective, this is absolutely one of the coolest implementations we have seen. And hey, if you made it this far, why don't you click on subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see whenever we come out with that Dell EMC PowerEdge R7525 video, which is going to be pretty soon. And also you can see whenever we come out with other kinds of content as well. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.